what is a healthy relationship? People ask all the time, what is a healthy relationship? They say, I've never had one. Is that you? Have you never had one? Let's talk about what a healthy relationship is so that when you are out there looking for friends, companions, relationships of any kind in your life, or you are meeting people in your life and you're considering letting them in, you know what to look for, okay? It's not your fault you don't know what a healthy relationship is if you've never had one, if you've never been shown the example of one, if your parents were toxic, narcissistic people, how are you supposed to know what love feels like? You're not. So let's start talking about it and let's start getting more awareness around what healthy is and what to expect and how to be healthy yourself so that you're healthy in a relationship. Okay, so so one thing is you have the space to be yourself, do your thing and to live an individual life, even if it's alongside with someone. So you can have a relationship with someone and be very close, but you're also your own person and you have the space to be your own person because that person allows you to be and you allow them to be. It's about allowance and it's about allowing the other person to have growth and change and make mistakes and have successes and all of that and them allowing you those same things. Another thing is you both are able to speak your truth and you do so fairly and kindly. If you argue, it is with purpose and the aim of resolution, the aim of finding a common ground, or if a common ground cannot be found, an aim of finding resolution that will work for the situation with compromise, sometimes theirs, sometimes yours. It's fair, it's productive, and there is always a genuine apology. Another thing in a healthy relationship Both people love themselves. You love yourself and they love you for who you are and vice versa. Another thing that happens in a healthy relationship is joy is present. It's not there all the time. It's not every moment of the day, but there is always a way to remember joy. There is joyful exchange and there is joyful happenings within the relationship on more of a regular basis than there is when you're with someone toxic. Because yes, of course, with someone toxic, there can be joy once in a while. But joy is like the foundation here in a healthy relationship. There's compromise and balance. So there's not always, it's not tit for tat, all right? It's not transactional per se. It's just that when there's compromise, it's recognized. And if that is recognized, it can be balanced with the other person compromising another time, not because they have to, but because they want to. They want the balance that is the compromise of both things. People learn and grow through the another person's experience of things. So if you have to compromise in a relationship and you learn something new or you have a new experience, that's fantastic. And then if they do the same thing, even better, right? So it's a healthy compromise. There is ever present kindness, even when things are rough. There isn't cruelty, there isn't hostility, there isn't the walls that go up in toxic relationships. There's kindness, there's kindness running through it all the time, even when things are challenging. There is trust. What? Yes, in healthy relationships, there is trust. You trust them to be who they are. They trust you to be who you are. There's consistency and there's openness, which helps build more and more trust. There are no grudges in healthy relationships. Things are worked through and talked about until there is either resolution or or acceptance of a situation. It's not dredged up. It's not, the past isn't brought back up. There's no, you're always this, you're always that. Okay. That doesn't happen in healthy relationships. There's shared intimacy, whatever that looks like in a relationship, because there's different types of relationships. So the word intimacy can be anything from touch to openness and vulnerability of conversation to sharing experiences in an open and, and, and trusting way, right? It's, it's shared. It's not one-sided. It feels safe when you're in healthy relationship. You may be an anxious person. You may have had, well, if you're here, you most likely have had a lot of toxic people in your life who have made life feel very unsafe and relationships feel very unstable. And that's your norm. Okay. If you're in something healthy with someone, you may not feel super safe. You may not feel super secure for quite a while, but you will start to see that there is safety in it. 
through the consistency and the trust as we're, through all of these things, it builds a feeling of safety. And it may take time for people who have been through toxic relationships, and you may need to do so with some coaching or some therapy alongside so that you are able to experience the safety and recognize it when it's there. Nothing is 100% safe. Okay, that's just the nature of life. But there is the feeling of security and groundedness and home when you're with someone that feels going to feel really weird because your sense of home and all of that, if you have been raised by toxic people or if you've been in a long term toxic relationship, is going to be that you're more comfortable in the discomfort. And that's not what you want, right? So it's about learning that safety feels differently and all these other things we're talking about, if they're there, learning to trust that. In a healthy relationship, people are striving to understand one another. They want to hear the perspective of the other person. They may not like it, but they want to hear it, right? They want to know the perspective and how that person thinks and why they think that way, because it's interesting. They love the person and it, they grow in the process of hearing the other perspective. Decisions are shared in healthy relationships for the most part not every decision if you need some autonomy of course in your life but big decisions decisions about things that relate to both people and affect both people they're shared they're not controlled they're discussed you share values you share i say the word morals but what i mean by that is you share a commonality of of the way you what you believe is right and wrong in this world you share the values that the other person shares. The time together in a healthy relationship feels like quality. It feels like it has substance and it has a sense of wanting to be there. You're encouraging to one another in a healthy relationship and you respect the differences that you both have. So those are some of the things that to look for if you're looking for a healthy relationship or if you're trying to be a healthy friend or be in a healthy relationship, things to strive for and to work on. That's not to say that if some of these things don't exist, that your relationship's falling apart and it's terrible. That's to say that there might be areas to work on if you're with someone who you believe is healthy right now and or you're trying to find healthy people. So to me, when I read all of this, I hear the, the litmus test, right, for narcissism. So if some area isn't working, say... Um, say you're you're going through stuff and there's not a lot of joy and people are going through stuff and stress and oh, it's happening right if you are able to discuss it openly which is another one of these right and talk about how there's not been a lot of joy going on between us it's been pretty tough and you are together able to make compromises changes see different angles hear each other's perspectives well you've just put in from one of these things falling apart you've put in five of them to get to where that one thing has a chance of improving. And that is a sign of a healthy relationship. It's all of these things working in play, not everything being there all at once that makes things healthy. It's as they're in play, these are the things employed instead of gaslighting and projecting and stonewalling and all the stuff that protects the ego of the narcissist. There's openness and kindness and the desire to work together to be healthy together and allowing when these things slip, when any one of these things slip for the other things to come in and support it so that the part that's not doing so well can be built back up. So anyway, that's a little talk on healthy relationships. I hope you all are able to find that in your life in some way, shape or form, even if it's just with yourself, because you know what, that's where it starts. The healthy relationship, all of this can also be applied to self. And if you can apply it to self, you will feel much better. So my name is Lise Colucci. I am one of the life coaches at Queen Being. If you need anything regarding coaching or group coaching, check out the main description of every video. If you have any questions, let me know. Let me know what you think of this and if you've experienced a healthy relationship or any questions about one, and I will try and give you an answer. Hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.